At the three minute mark, I go into the details of how to tie a very realistic looking eyed egg pattern, the cross-eyed egg. But before that, if you continue to watch, you'll see how I, the importance of the eyed egg and how they come about, as well as the design of the fly. So if you have the time, keep on watching. Otherwise, skip over to the three minute mark to see the tying. These freshly laid rainbow trout eggs incubate and become eyed eggs at about 50 to 60% of the incubation time. The difference between the species is what the incubation time is. Spring spawning occurs in warming waters and it takes as little as 20 days in water temperatures in the 50s to reach the eyed egg stage. Hatching then occurs that same spring through early summer. Early fall through winter spawning occurs in cooling waters and it takes months to reach the eyed egg stage. Hatching mostly occurs in winter through early spring of the following year. So what is the fate of the eyed egg? Some go on to hatch and become albins. Others are dug up by spawning trout. The various trout species tend to dig their reds in exact same areas and consequently People that have uh, observ uh, published observations on this show that there's a strong probability that some eggs are dug out of the older reds by the builders of new ones. And Wright, 1985, observed that rainbows may well dig up and destroy many eyed eggs of other species. The importance of the eyed egg is that they're available many months of the year. If you chart up the spawning months of the various trout species, starting with the Late summer, we find that the brooks and browns are spawning starting in September and that the eyed eggs develop a couple months later. Um, so you have the situation there where the early spawn is being dug up by the later spawners. In turn, the uh, overwintering eggs from the brooks and browns are dug up by the uh, rainbows, cutthroats, and stock trout in the late winter and spring. In turn, those spring spawners, the early spawn from them develops eyed eggs and is dug up by the later spawners in turn. So this means that the eyed eggs are available about six months of the year. Now on to the design of the cross-eyed egg. To get the proper diameter, I charted up this egg sizes reported in the literature for the various trout species. Uh, what you come up with is that the average trout egg is about 5 millimeters plus or minus 1 millimeter. There are outliers like small brooks or have very small eggs or very large steelhead have much larger eggs, but for, predominantly the average size is 5 millimeters. To determine the color that I'm going to tie the cross-eyed egg in, I went out to the web and compiled public domain pictures of trout and salmon eggs. What you see here is that the yellowish orange through orange color is by far the predominant color that we find in these eggs. So the most widely useful cross-eyed egg pattern will be tied at five millimeters diameter and a yellowish orange color. Today I'm tying the uh, cross-eyed egg. It's an egg pattern that uh, uses a scud hook in this case, I'm using the Firehole 637, which is a two extra gap hook, and it has a big eye for my old eye, so I can tie that thin little tippet in. Uh, any scud hook is uh, could be used, or an egg hook for that matter. I also use the TMCO 2457 or the 2487 um, hook, but in this case, I'm using the... Uh, this extra wide gap hook because the egg ball is going to sit down in this realm here and I want to make sure I have enough hook point exposed that I get good uh, hooking. I'm not going to go a lot, of, uh, a lot into the details of the recipe because that's given up front in the YouTube introduction. Uh, to, to make this fly, it's what I use uh, instead of a pre-made cast like lead uh, dumbbell, I use a um, a mono dumbbell that I make out of two uh, tungsten weights, 1.5 millimeter weights. To do that, I fuse a, a ball on the end of the 
of the monofilament. In this case, it's maxima 10 pound. Um, I've also already threaded on then two beads against the, the little mono uh, ball there, the melted ball. The, I've made these so that the uh, countersunk ends are towards what are going to be the ends of the dumbbell, so they sort of fit up over the mono, uh, uh, melted mono. Uh, I know that this, because these are two 3.5 millimeter beads, I know that this is three millimeters long, and I want the overall length of this dumbbell to be around four to five millimeters. So I'm going to cut this about twice as long, um, the monofilament, I'm going to cut it off about my, twice as long, six, seven millimeters. There, it's hard to see. And then I'm going to fuse the other end uh, and take it back down to five or four millimeters, like that. Um, this is how it turns out. And I've got it in the bead pliers because it makes it much easier to tie. Uh, so I do that tie-in by figurating first several times in one direction, then I square up the weight and tie it several times in the other direction. And I want it to end up just slightly forward of center of the center of the hook shank, because I like the sort of the weight forward or ball forward look of the egg pattern. So I tie it in pretty harsh, pretty heavy, hard, and the 30 denier nano silk takes it well, takes the pressure. And then I put a dab of, of super glue on to sort of hold the assembly in place. To do that, I use a uh, toothpick so I can control the volume and the placement of the, of the uh, super glue on these small flies. This is uh, the cross formed by this assembly is why this this egg pattern gets the name the cross-eyed egg because it forms a cross. So it's pretty pretty straightforward. Um, today I'm going to dub with the uh, Spectra number 41, 35, sorry. The 41 is the pink and the, that I use in the Spectra line. And 35 is this sort of orange-yellow color or orange. Uh, and I do that by forming a split thread dubbing loop. If I could find my, there it is. So I, I take a very fine point bodkin and I split, loosen up on the nano silk and I rough, try to roughly split it in half. And I stick my finger in there to hold it apart, the dubbing loop apart. And I wax it heavily to hold the fibers in place. And then I take and, and tease off thin little bits of the dubbing and try to have them end up crosswise in the split thread dubbing loop. The reason I like this Spectra is it's a medium textured, medium cut to fine cut sparkle yarn. I think the sparkle yarn helps look like the membrane of the egg. And then the uh, <clears throat> the fine textured and loose looseness that I can spread these fibers as opposed to like egg yarn. Uh, I get a, uh, when I twist this, I'll get a dubbing brush rather than a dubbing noodle. And I think the dubbing brush is going to look much more like an egg with it, with the fibers radiating out. Um, okay. Then I close it off with my finger and I tighten up the bobbin and I spin it. And I can re, for one, I want to get it radiating out after I've spun it a bit. So I tease the fibers out myself. Okay, and I add what 
more fiber, more fuzziness by using the static clean method like this. Now if this isn't enough dubbing, I can always add more by just splitting the loop again. Okay, then I start winding it in one direction. It's not quite a figure eight, it's a sort of a serial figure eight. So I'm building up in one direction to get about five millimeters. And then I reverse directions and I tie it Tie the other half of the dubbing brush in. And then I tie off at the eye. A double whip finish, but no cement. Because I find it just gets sucked right back into the fibers. It makes a hard little knot in your fly. Um, so then I pull up. Yeah. You know, increase the translucency. I pull out some of the fibers using a piece of Velcro. And I sh I'm sort of uh, grooming it to form it into a sphere. And then I pull up and cut. Pull up and cut. Get rid of the real long fibers. And there you have it, the uh, cross-eyed egg in about a five millimeter, five millimeter ball. So there you can see it's right around five millimeters, which is the most common diameter of an of a trout egg. I wanted to show you one other thing that's interesting about these dubbing, fuzzy dubbing flies, is you can take your Bic lighter and you can actually reduce the diameter somewhat by fusing those fibers. You just have to be pretty careful with it. There. There you go. So if you want to go to smaller diameter or less fuzziness, you can fuse the fly. You just have to be careful that if, if you go too far, you really can annihilate the fly and make a dense uh, dubbing plastic melted mass. It's also possible to tie a, a four-eyed version of the uh, cross-eyed egg. And I just do that by taking two of these mono dumbbells and forming an X pattern on top of the hook. Um, I'm tying on top of the hook because I get inversion weighting. If I tie opposite from the hook point on the uh, hook shank, then it's going to flip over in the water and I get less uh, hang-ups. Now the reason, uh, the thing, thinking behind this uh, four-eyed version is that, in fact, the fry do have pairs of eyes and that the idea is that the trout is only going to ever see half of the fly and so it, to them it's going to appear like a double of eyes, a pair of eyes if you will. So I've tied in the two mono dumbbells and now I'm going to dub in one direction and I go between them and then I come over here and I've made these mono dumbbells slightly longer so I can bend them. Make it a little easier to bend and get the thread between them. See, now I'm going to have to add a little more thread. So I've skipped here to the finished four eyes uh, egg pattern. And here you can see it's a pretty good uh, imitation of the natural, both in color and size at around five millimeters, as well as having two eyes.